We're going to examine part of the nervous system of the locust and try to find out how the patterns of certain nerve impulses are related to the insect's behaviour when threatened by a possible predator. It leaps for safety when stimulated by sudden movements in its vicinity. We shall examine the impulses which pass along a chain of axons leading from the locust's brain to muscles in its jumping legs. A large female locust is chilled in a refrigerator so that its activity is slowed down, but it isn't killed. A mount is prepared on which the insect can be held in position for the experiment with its ventral surface uppermost. It's stuck down using melted beeswax. Its legs are removed before it's put in position. There's one of the insect's eyes, and there's the thorax with the stumps of the six legs. These fine silver wires are going to be placed under a section of the ventral nerve cord here, inside the insect's neck. Connection can then be made along this cable to the recording equipment, which we shall see later. A piece of tape helps secure the locust. It's put under the dissecting microscope. Then small pieces of wax are placed against its neck like this. and they're melted into position, holding the head back. Another piece of wax on the other side. Now we're ready to begin the dissection.
tissue is very carefully cut away from the neck. Dry it out a little. And we expose the cervical connectives of the ventral nerve cord. The descending contralateral movement detector, the DCMD, runs inside these connectives. Now, one of the fine silver wires is placed in position under the nerve cord. It's pressed into the melted wax to hold it in position. Now for the second wire. This too is fixed down into the softened wax. We separate the wires so that they're not touching. and cover the wound with petroleum jelly to protect it from desiccation. Here's the experimental setup. There's the locust. It's placed inside an electrically screened cage and the leads from the two silver wire electrodes in contact with the nerve cord are plugged into the display unit. Now electrical activity in the cord will be picked up by the electronic equipment. A preamplifier multiplies the current 1,000 times and its output is amplified another ten times and fed to this oscilloscope screen. The nerve impulses are also converted into sound signals heard from this loudspeaker. A second oscilloscope can store the pattern present at any given moment in time so that it can be examined. Just now, the locus eyes are not being stimulated in any way. We're interested in this, its right eye. The oscilloscope exhibits the resting state, with no prominent nerve impulses showing. Frozen on the storage screen, it looks like this. we can slow down the scan speed on the oscilloscope so that we get this on the screen. And here it is as it appears on the storage screen. There are no large spikes in the pattern when the insect's eye is not being stimulated. We're now going to stimulate the right eye by making a shadow pass over it. See the characteristic large spikes indicating nerve impulses in the DCMD? Here they are, frozen. Each spike represents what's called an action potential of about two millivolts in the neuron. The pattern's biphasic, a peak followed by a trough. Let's watch it at a slower rate of scan. On the storage screen, Resting, we 